Let's talk about what makes the British blues guitar sound. And that is really, I think, one of the key elements to British blues is the tone. Certainly the attack and the playing, of course, but it was the tone that was very different from what came before. And we can thank, I think, Eric Clapton for that. He was playing a Les Paul at the time, uh, especially on John Mayall's Blues Breakers. That's where the definitive, they call it the Beano guitar tone. And that is a Les Paul cranked into a Marshall JTM 45 Blues Breaker combo. The, it wasn't called the Blues Breaker combo. It's now known as the Blues Breakers combo because Clapton played it on that record. Now, apparently from the stories and you watch documentaries that nobody ever really played that loudly before and they had a hard time recording them uh, in the BBC studios because Clapton was so loud and they said part of learning how to record him was what the sound of the record became. So what I'm using uh, on this course is a similar to something of that period, maybe a little later, but I'm using a 20 watt Marshall head. It's the 2061X and the way these old amps work and the way uh, you get the sound out of them is you just turn them up <laughs> all the way. Of course, you have to deal with a lot of volume, and that's why uh, it becomes very difficult to use them in clubs a lot of times because they're so loud. So uh, a good kind of modern way around this is to get a lower wattage amp and crank it up. If you walked into a club and turned up a 30-watt JTM45, it says total JTM45, but it's 30 watts. That's loud. That's really, 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 really loud. I've never been able to play that loud in a club. But... That's the sound. So what I'm doing is I'm check. There's two channels here. There's a high channel and a low channel. And what Clapton would do in these guys, they crank the amp all the way up, and you can jumper the two channels. Now I'm not exactly sure if he did that on that record. There's all sorts of conjecture about what happened on that record. Um, only he really knows, and I don't think he remembers all that much. He says so. Um, basically, it's a Marshall non-master volume amp cranked to ten, and Jim Marshall. That was one of those first amps he designed it for Clapton because he wanted a louder amp that could distort and get sustain and have it made in England. And he made it a 212 combo because he wanted it to fit into the trunk of his of his car is the story. Okay, so that's the amp. I got it cranked up. And I'm using the Les Paul. I am plugged directly into the amplifier. I've got no pedals in line, no boost, nothing like that. It's just the amp. So one of the key things about this kind of music. You could be using a Strat to, that's not what you're going to associate with Clapton and Peter Green, who are Les Paul players, or Jimmy Page, though Page played a Telecaster and early Zeppelin stuff. Um, for this kind of thicker sound, it's generally going to be a Gibson. Now, um, I've got a two humbucker guitar here, and there's some really fun stuff that I learned from watching an Eric Clapton video, that uh, Cream Farewell concert, where he does this little weird interview uh, where he talks about how he gets some of his tones, and this like opened up all of it for me. So we have a, a tone and a volume for each pickup, of course, in your standard Les Paul. So if I go to my bridge, now they didn't have channel switching or anything like that. So if Clapton wanted to get a cleaner tone, he rolled back his volume. <laughs> There's my lead tone. Roll my volume back. Here's a clean and rhythm tone. That was it. There was no pedals. They just kind of just did that. Um, so what I learned from that Clapton video is how much he would use the pickup combinations and get different sounds just out of the guitar. And Jimmy Page was a master at this. You watch Jimmy Page and all those old videos from like Song Remains the Same or even him playing now. He's always got his tone, his, his pickup selector, in the middle on a Les Paul. Growing up, I always had it on the neck or the bridge. So let's talk about uh, Clapton for a minute. He's known for something called the woman tone, and that's this thick tone where he would just roll his tone knob back. You gotta find the right spot. Like sunshine, your love, you know. You know that kind of really big round tone. And same thing, you go in the bridge pickup and do the same thing. Roll that back. We can brighten it up. And also, if you roll back the neck volume, turn that tone back up. Nice, cool rhythm guitar sound. Now, something to kind of experiment with also is um, 
the tone knobs between each of the pickups. So if I want to have my bridge be a little darker, I might put that about five and, and my neck pickup be a little brighter. And I might have bridge. Let's put it all the way up. So I can take off some of the high end on the bridge pickup and kind of balance them out a little bit more. Now, something that Jimmy Page would do quite a bit is mix the two pickups, which is a ton of fun. So with a Les Paul with standard wiring, I can blend the two together. So here is half and half. Everything's at about five. If I want to brighten that up, I can turn up the bridge pickup. Here it's a little brighter. So if I want to brighten up the neck pickup, I'm going to turn the neck pickup up and add in some bridge. Here's the neck pickup all together. A little bit of bridge. Got more. So it's a really fun thing to experiment with, and a lot of times I'll have it mainly bridge with a little bit of neck to warm it up. So here's all bridge. Sounds awesome. A little bit of neck. All bridge. A little bit of neck in there. So it kind of darkens it up just a little bit. So you get a lot of great tonal variations just from the guitar. And I think this is what people forget. And I know I didn't spend a lot of time back then thinking about when I was younger. I had all these pedals and this and that. I'm just plugging a guitar in into an amplifier. Hendrix would do the same thing. He had some pedals, but it was basically maybe just a fuzz for the distortion. Jimmy Page, it was an overdrive. Clapton and Page a lot of times just plugged right into the amplifier. Peter Green, right into the amplifier, no pedals. So... Their sound is in their hands, and that's the most important thing to walk away with here. They sound like they sound like because they are who they are, and they play the way they are, and how they attack the notes with a pick and all sorts of things like that. But um, it's also, there's no nonsense. It's all coming from the guitar, your hands, and a single amplifier. So a tube amp, look for a good one, one that interacts with your guitar playing, with your dynamics, your pick, and experiment with your volume controls, picking on different parts of the neck, getting all the sounds from the instrument.